Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brad Williams. I am the Vice President of Government Relations with the Detroit Regional Chamber. Uh, it is one o'clock and thank you so much uh, for joining us again for uh, another one of our town halls. We've been having these, uh, gosh, for four and a half, almost five months now uh, since we all uh, went home back in March. Uh, and so it's been a long haul that um, you've been uh, seeing my face uh, in this very seat, uh, but we're happy to uh, be here today. And today we brought with uh, brought on with us uh, Maureen Francis. Maureen is an associate broker uh, with Coldwell Banker uh, in Birmingham, but importantly for the topic of this conversation is the president of Michigan Realtors, uh, which is the trade association for the realtor real estate profession uh, throughout uh, throughout the state, uh, because we wanted to spend some time talking about the most uh, valuable investment that any of us makes uh, in our lifetime, and that is our home. And what the market looks like, uh, what realtors are uh, doing to help uh, make the process of home buying and home selling uh, uh, manageable uh, through COVID-19 uh, and, and, and learn about the market. So we're gonna have some conversation uh, with Maureen, as always, we do have the opportunity uh, for you to ask questions. There is a question tab uh, on your GoToWebinar uh, program. If you have a question, please uh, feel free and type it in, and I will try and get to those uh, as is possible. But Maureen, first of all, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate the invitation. Well, so let's first of all start off um, and, and, and ask how is uh, the market uh, looking right now um, beyond um, you know, the adjustments that all of our realtors and sellers and buyers have to make, but how does the market look? Um, is, it, are, is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market right now? Um, how are things looking? Well, you know, Brett, there's a number of answers to that. First of all, I practice primarily residential real estate. So while I can speak a little bit to commercial, um, I'm not as uh, well attuned to what's going on there. Um, but in residential, we are seeing, uh, going into this pandemic, we had um, a number of just economic things going on that made it a strong seller's market. We had great interest rates, we had a shortage of inventory, and we had pent up demand. So basically what happened during the pandemic or during the shutdown is we slowed down a bit. Um, people were concerned or they were, you know, we, they weren't able to leave their house to see the houses. Um, and then when we were reopened, it kind of the floodgates opened in most segments of the market. Um, the one segment I would say that is not necessarily at the same level is uh, the high, high end, um, but I, I see that even that is doing, it's, it's, it's shifting, it's doing fine. Um, people have really reevaluated what's important for them in their home. Yeah. So w there are things that people didn't care about and actually did not want last year, like a pool. And this year, if you try and call a pool contractor, mm -hmm you're probably a year out on getting him to come to your house to install a pool. Um, and if you live on a lake, why did I not buy a lake house last year when I thought, said I wanted to? And now I don't know if I could find one um, that would be you know, what I want. Uh, people want bigger spaces than they wanted before. People are moving out yeah. of um, urban cores. It's places where they can have a little bit more land, um, a little bit more space around them for whatever it is. you know. Um, I wish I had a bigger spot for my garden. Um, other people want more room for their kids to play basketball or soccer or whatever else it would be. Or, and now people need a place for mom and dad to work and the kids to be doing their homeschooling and all of that. You're working, obviously, it looks like from your living room today. Brad. I, you know what? Yeah, it's kitchen table, but yes, yeah, it's, it's a former living room before a remodel. Oh. Hence the uh, fireplace over my shoulder, but yes. Nice, a kitchen with a fireplace. I like that a lot. That's a good selling feature someday, Brad. Well, when the day comes, you'll be you'll be on my speed dial. Um, awesome. <laughs> so, how many of these adjustments in the market do you expect to be permanent? I mean, for me, the work from home kind of homeschooling thing is, you know, as as a, an individual, is the first thing that jumps to my mind. I mean, are you seeing people who maybe last year at this time? would have been interested in three bedrooms who are asking for four bedrooms. And do you expect that to continue 
beyond when we kind of go back to normal to the extent that normal will ever exist again? Well, I think that we will still continue to value that because I think that this um, event is emotionally um, transformative for most of us. We didn't go through it easily. And when you realize that you need this and you realize that you may need it again, you kind of hold on to those values. Just like my grandfather who grew up in the depression was well off, but was still hoarding uh, canned beans in the basement and saving his box tops from cereal in case he could use it to, you know, repurpose something. So I think, you know, this isn't like the Great Depression, it's not the Great Depression, but it is something that is going to leave a mark on everyone that's living through it in the United States. Hey, you mentioned when we first started a little bit about geography, and I've been wondering about that too. How do you think the geography of real estate is going to change. I mean, my, my guess is that you're probably seeing fewer people in urban cores, like you mentioned, uh, at least temporarily, but things like school districts, I think maybe changes a little bit too, if people start to think this is a more permanent um, or, or semi-permanent state that we're in. Have you, have you seen the geography change at all? You know, in terms of, well, school districts is an interesting um, discussion and I don't, you know, I have had people recently tell me that they were not pleased with the way that their school district made their back to school plan. And they were asking about other neighboring districts and how they were handling it and seeing you know, if they could enroll there, if there was open enrollment. And I think at some point, if they're not happy with it, they would consider moving, you know, to be in a school district, which has always been something that people have done you know, but not because of um, virtual schooling or anything else, but just because of other things that the school district could provide. So it, it, we are, you know, and another thing about mobility too, is that we have had so many people moving here from really big cities like LA, um, Chicago, New York City, where they're coming back to Metro Detroit because this is where their family is and they want to be near their family now and also we're not as congested so that they know that they can get you know a nicer lot than they would have in New York City where they wouldn't have anything and they'd be in a high rise um so they're they're coming here and at first they were just asking for you know the the requests for like short-term rentals were off the chart you know people say like oh does anyone have a house that they we can rent in Birmingham for two months my family's coming to town well nobody did so and they wanted it furnished and we don't do furnished rentals in Michigan that's a Florida thing and a you know vacation spot thing west side of the state does but here we don't southeast Michigan um so I think that that is something that will I some of those people are buying now they're not yeah. they're not going back because they can telecommute well, that's great. Let's keep them here. I I, I, I love, I mean, there, there is very little out of this pandemic that has come out that's been good. But if it means more people move to Michigan, I'm I, I'm okay with that particular part of it. I want to be careful. That's yeah. the only part I'm, I'm, I'm okay yeah. with. But um, let's change topics a little bit and talk about what it looks like when you are selling or buying. Um, you know, you, you've uh, just made the pitch to me that you'd like to sell my home. What does that look like um, as <laughs> someone, if I, if I were to sell my home, what does that look like? What are the different precautions that sellers need to take right now uh, to make sure that potential buyers and their agents are safe? Yeah, so there are a lot of things that we're doing right now. Um, and it, in a few minutes, I'll ask you to pop up a video that I did that shows uh, some of the things that we're doing because videos become very important for us. We're also using a lot of, um, legal documents that Brian Westron and our staff at Michigan Realtors have helped us prepare so that in case something does happen pandemic related and we can't make it to a closing or so that we're asking buyers in advance of going into the house, do you have COVID symptoms before we take you into someone's house? Um, we're leaving masks, we're leaving uh, instructions not to touch things, we're leaving, uh, we're asking sellers when they can to leave lights on and leave doors open so that when people come through, they're doing the minimum amount of disturbing the space. Um, we're not having overlapping appointments. We are, I mean, a lot of these things are suggested best practices. Some of them are, you know, the masks, obviously, some come for your house without a mask, please. Um, but it's up to the, you know, it's up, 
we're limiting the number of people in the space. The, uh, we are doing some public open houses again, but we are controlling how many people come into the house at a time. Really video is the strongest tool that we have. Um, my husband and I work together. We sold houses when we were not allowed to leave our house uh, during the beginning of the shutdown uh, or during the shutdown. We were not, we, I didn't leave this couch, you see right behind me. And um, I taught the seller how to do FaceTime and or Zoom. And I got all four parties on the Zoom at the same time and walked them through the house. My seller didn't do any talking. I did all the talking. Buyers could ask me questions. Buyer's agent could ask me questions. We had a house that had been on the market for probably a couple weeks before the pandemic, but people were always getting a little freaked out. Then near the end, we had three showing requests in, in 24 hours, and all three people wanted to make an offer on the house. So, you know, the, the market was springing back at that point, and we were still in lockdown but we were able to provide the information that the buyer and the seller needed in order to make that transaction take place. Those buyers never physically entered that home until they got the keys. And so to, just to put it in context, how often did something like that happen to you before the pandemic, where you sold a house without, anyone, without someone walking in it? In Southeast Michigan, that is not very common. In, in vacation markets, that is common. Um, I have always shown people houses on FaceTime if they couldn't be here and done other video things if they couldn't be here, but without them ever walking in, it's very, very rare here. And especially mm -hmm. when they live two blocks away, which is where these people were moving from. <laughs> Do you have any sort of expectation though then that this virtual aspect, you know, I mean, we've, we've had FaceTime as you've mentioned and you've shown things via FaceTime. We've had FaceTime and Zoom for you know a decade it seems like but at least from a business context i found i've used video conferencing you know i use video conferencing more in the first week i was home than in my entire career before right. do you think that this will be the same uh with real estate that you'll have that that maybe not never walking in the door but that you'll be using these tools more frequently um to show houses than you had in the past I definitely think we will be using it. So there's, um, Brad, I put together a, a something so that people can pull up the links of things that I'm talking about or resources that we have available. And uh, if you could, if someone could pop that in the chat, please. It is link.tr slash Maureen Francis. And that's gonna show you, um, Brad, if you click on the 3D home walkthrough of yep. 1701 channel. Can you see my screen all right? We, I can, yep. Okay, so, this, so this is actually, I shot this yesterday. I bought a very um, hard to get and expensive new camera that's in this little bag right here. Um, it's a 3D camera. And uh, it's actually been sold out of stock since February around the world. Um, but I managed to like place that order within the 10 second order window and get it. So what this does is it allows people to basically walk through the house without being there. And it's got 360 photos that people can look up, they can look down. Um, I, I shot this yesterday. The house is coming on the market either later today or tomorrow. This is the only, I use professional photographs for everything else. So the photographer, I took this, but the professional photographer takes our regular listing photos. Um, but this is something that I can pop up real quick and then the buyer has a lot more autonomy in terms of sure. what they can see and how they see it. And they know that I'm not only showing them the best angle of the house, because literally I'm showing them everything. Um, it's all out there. And it, so we're finding that tools like this is, are fantastic. And I can't imagine this going away. And that's why I bought the camera. And my photographer wants to buy the camera from me because he can't get one. But I'm keeping it because I know there's so many applications for what I can do with this uh, to be able to provide this to my clients. Um, whether it's someone, we've got some transferees coming from um, out of state and they're not here yet. And I know that most agents aren't gonna be providing this. So if I go and do this in 10 minutes uh, or you know whatever it takes me to do it, then they don't have to try and drive across the, you know, 
drive into town to see the house, they've got a really good idea of what they're looking at what, and what they'd be making an offer on. And it's great for people later too, um, because then, you know, when they want to see where's their furniture going to fit and um, what am I going to do with grandpa's big couch? You know, they can use this to see, okay, that could go there, that could go there during that phase before they actually move in. So I, I, this is something I don't see going away. Then in terms of, if you go back to that link tree, Brad, please. Sure. There is, um, so video marketing. Uh, if you click that, that might have some noise to it. Can you hear the sound too? Yeah. Okay. an example we have to use video a lot more in what we're doing that house had been staged we weren't getting a ton of traffic on it and then we had it staged and we were able to put all these little videos out similar to that that were 30 seconds 40 seconds long and got people intrigued and got it they went like semi-viral you know everyone was willing to share them the neighbors were willing to share it instead of just like uh, you know the usual pictures of the house or whatever so it, you know we just try to be really creative in the things that we are doing for our clients in order to tap into and using that technology to, for successful transactions. As a as a home buyer then though, what are what are the things that home buyers should be thinking about that are different now than they were five months ago? Uh, and and what, what tips would you give a home home buyer that's preparing to enter the market? Whether it's their first home or they're buying, you know, maybe their third or fourth house. Uh, of their life? Um, well, they're going to be doing probably more research online, even though they've already been doing a lot of that. But we're going to want to give them all the tools that we can before they actually physically go in the property. We're really trying to limit how much time people spend in properties. And it doesn't mean we don't want you to see a house. We do want you to see a house. But we want to, you know, not see 75 in order to buy one or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's more of a, you know, we're encouraging drive-bys, we're encouraging looking at the photos, we're encouraging, like, I would be, if, if another agent's not using photos and enough photos, then I'd be happy to call them and ask for more, or, or I will go take them and get them to a buyer if that's what has to be done. Um, so there's a lot of different things in that way. It's really important that they're pre-approved. It always has been, but right now they're typically competing with someone else for the same property. And um, frankly, I'm not going to show anyone a house that isn't pre-approved right now because I'm putting other people at risk by doing that, you know, by take, by exposing myself and others to um, someone. So, uh, you know, those are some of the things that I would think about going into it that, you know, there's things like they, they, I might not be, I probably won't be at their closing, but we will have gone through everything really carefully. Um, there will be provisions within a contract that says if, you know, someone gets COVID on either side of the transaction that we might need an extra 30 days and it will address exactly how we're going to handle that if that does happen. I would say it's like, honestly, never been more important that someone has an agent helping them um, just because there are so many uncertainties now or things that didn't used to be like we've always done them, just like everything else. You know, it's like, are we going back? I don't, I don't know that we're going back. So many things have changed, um, and we we imp we provide incredible value in terms of protecting someone as they go through this transaction. So, what is your your what is the economic impact on? Uh, the real estate market right now. I mean, we just saw news last Friday that the economy has contracted, um, it, you know, further than I think a lot of people even expected. Um, but we also, you know, know that this was a choice that we made to deal with the, the virus and so that it could come back. 
you know, what sort of impact is that having on things like interest rates, people's ability to get pre-qualified, those sorts of things that, you know, I know is particularly for first time home buyers are maybe the biggest stressors coming into this. Yeah. So um, interest rates are spectacular and there's never been a better time, literally, even though probably everyone's heard realtors saying that for the last 15 years, but really there has never been a better time. The interest rates are incredible. Um, in terms of uh, the, um, the, the general overall economy, we're still seeing uh, market demand from buyers in residential real estate. And, and we still anticipate that it's going to go up through the fourth quarter. Actually, on that link tree, which everyone can um, have their own copy of, there are a couple of reports that I have um, prepared for them that they can download and read at their own leisure, all Metro Detroit related. Um, one is what from the National Association of Realtors is identifying as um, the economic impact of uh, COVID on the real estate economy in Metro Detroit. Um, so that was put together by NAR's chief economist for us. It's probably 14 pages of great information for anyone that is so inclined. Um, and then there's another one that I had also put together by a National Association of Realtors source, and it is chock full of charts and graphs and um, other stuff if anyone wants to nerd out on the numbers. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking at this right now, and it, 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 it is great. For those who are listening in, uh, if you look at the chat function in your GoToWebinar, uh, my colleague Megan Spanitz has shared the link uh, to Maureen's link tree, which has uh, the video uh, tour I just showed you and the video I just showed you, as well as all the documents uh, Maureen is referring to. So please uh, take a look at that. And I'm looking at the uh, uh, local economic area report uh, that you did for the Metro Detroit region. And it's uh, very, very interesting. Interesting stuff. Um, what about the market um, uh, in the rest of the state? I mean, we've talked a lot about in our region, but how is it looking in the rest of the state? And I think in particular about the places in our state that are maybe more uh, second home type places, um, you know, more vacation type areas that maybe folks who are listening in are, 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 are thinking about that or, or own a home uh, outside of the region, a second home. Yeah, Brett, I'm not actually um, so well versed in areas outside of Metro Detroit, but I would say just um, anecdotally that uh, I have heard more people valuing their cottages up north or wanting to own a cottage up north um, than I had heard in a long time. So people people are wanting to, um, I don't know, uh, entertain themselves in more controlled environments than what they've been doing in the past. So a cottage affords them that opportunity, whereas a, a big resort like Disney World might not anymore. So uh, they're choosing they're choosing to different kinds of vacations. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's speaking very for, myself, for the whole state. Yeah, speaking for myself, I don't own a cottage, but I have invested a lot more uh, in things that I can do at home. So I, I, I certainly can understand with that. Um, as we are hopefully on the road to economic recovery, what are the things that uh, realtors are focusing on uh, to help um, make sure that the, the, the real estate market continues to be strong? Uh, like I said at the beginning, this is the most important investment that um, almost everybody makes uh, in their life. Um, are, there, are there specific things that you're looking for out of Washington or Lansing uh, to happen over the course of the next six to 12 months to help keep the economy strong and keep your industry strong? Um, well, in terms of Washington, we do continue to work uh, with econo on economic stimulus packages, and we're always working on um, a number of other things in Washington in terms of making ensuring that 30 year fixed mortgage remains protected. That's always been at the cornerstone of um, our advocacy efforts in DC. Um, we are also working on, um, oh, I'm going blank a little bit. Uh, we, we're very focused on fair housing uh, locally and in the state of Michigan. Um, and then with, in terms of the state, we, we've done a lot of things in the last couple of years that have really 
uh, made a difference in what we're doing now. And I have to give credit to our staff and having been incredibly um, foresighted in 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 having having us ready for this or as ready as we could be. Um, some of the documents that we needed in order to uh, to deal with COVID were actually prepared for the last, either the SARS outbreak or something else. So we, we were ready. All we had to do was kind of tweak things for today. Um, and then other efforts that we have going on right now in Lansing. Um, Brian, anything you want to chime in there? Thank you. You know, I think I think uh, one nice um, thing to plug here and dovetails with Brad's question about uh, you know vacation destinations. You know, we've been working on short-term rental uh, on a statewide basis. Um, short-term rental and the availability of short-term rentals uh, was one of those things that uh, certainly was impacted by the early executive orders. Um, and the stay-at-home order, um, you could only rent a short-term rental to medical personnel. Uh, and over the last few months, we have seen uh, local governments start to look at short-term rental regulation. Um, we have been advocating for at least a statewide definition of what constitutes a short-term rental, because uh, right now we're concerned uh, that, that we could end up with a patchwork of different definitions around the state and different jurisdictions. Uh, but we do we do see value, and we do know that buyers uh, bake into the value of that second home purchase the flexibility to uh, maximize the value of that property through short-term rental in a lot of instances. So we continue to advocate for that as a private property right, but one that has to be balanced um, on the other side for full-time residents. You know, we don't want discourteous behavior. We don't want you know bedlam. Um, we want uh, we want a sense of um, clarity, and I think that that's you know Maureen can speak to it clearly. Is is what every buyer wants? A prospective buyer wants to know what they're getting into, uh, and when the question is asked, you know, are short term rentals allowed? And the answer is, well, you know, it's it's in discussion. That's not clarity. Yeah. So. Well, my family is uh, renting a short term rental next week for vacation, and I will try not to make your job any harder. Yeah, thanks, Brian. I, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't account for my wife, but I will not, for, for me, I won't make it any harder. <laughs> uh, we are right up uh, against our 1.30 time limit, and Maureen and Brian, thank you very much for your time today. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the links that Maureen referenced and the ones we showed are all available uh, in the chat room. Uh, we have a wealth of information from the chamber uh, on our Detroit Regional Chamber web uh, resource website. It's DetroitChamber.com slash COVID-19. Uh, there you will find not only a recording of this program, uh, but each of the ones that we've done over the course of the last uh, several months. Uh, I may go back and start listening to some in the beginning just to see how far we've come. It's been a it's been it's been a long haul. Uh, I think we've got a little a little bit left in front of us, uh, but we appreciate uh, Maureen and Brian your your time today and and being part of uh, being part of our town hall series. But with that, I will thank you uh, and thank you for listening in and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.